Hi, Prana. Hi, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm here just hanging out with some of our lovely bug ambassadors. Oh, cool. So where are you now? The Butterfly House doesn't have a space. Where are you right now? So our offices are located at the Montana Natural History Center for the time mm -hmm. being. We don't have a physical location where you can see all of these bugs. Right. Um, we may be setting up an exhibit with the Montana Natural History Center in the future. Um, but as you know, we are all kind of coming out of our little COVID bubbles. Um, yeah. That is still in the works. Um, and so are you now, in the we're office? We're doing mobile programs, of course, yep. our online bug encounters. Um, and then hopefully you guys, the everyone will get to see these guys in person soon, so. Yeah. These guys are some of my favorite. Yeah, so this is a leaf insect, one of our many various, what are known as phasmids. So stick insects, leaf insects, all belong to the family of Phasmatidea. Um, very fragile, very gentle little herbivores. So I have quite a few others if you would like to see them. Yes, I would. All right. So I don't know if anyone has been watching our page as much as I have, but it looks like we are only about $700 away from meeting our $25,000 uh, fundraising I, goal. I think you made it because we, we just had a it? huge jump. We're at over yeah, $900,000. Awesome. <laughs> that is such yes. awesome news. And I think you yes. already mentioned it, but with that fundraising goal comes a $75,000 matching prize. Yes. Um, so the initial $25,000 will go towards our education program and of, uh, programs and of course, you know, keeping these guys nice and healthy, yep. but the $75,000 matching prize is going to go towards the construction of our new facility where you will get to see these guys in person. Um, so that is, that is really exciting news. Yep. I, I know. I didn't know that we had made it at this point. Yeah. So, um, so what do these guys eat? So uh, these, most of our phasmids, well, some of them are extremely picky. So mm -hmm. some of them will eat just romaine lettuce. Um, uh -huh. This particular species in my hand right now is a um, Australian walking stick and she's still a juvenile. Um, so she'll get a lot bigger. Um, but these guys eat almost exclusively ficus leaves, which they are eating right now and uh, raspberry leaves. Oh, yeah. But we haven't found anything else that these guys like to eat. So finding food in the winter can be a little tricky. No? But we managed to make it. Now we're out on the other room. side. So yeah, once yeah. this girl is full grown, she'll actually be about the size of my hand. Whoa. Uh, and yeah. where, do, where do these guys live? These ones are found in northern Australia. Mm -hmm. So like the tropical regions of Australia. Queensland, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, these guys are pretty cool. Most of the insects that I'm, uh, showing you today are arthropods because not everyone is an insect, um, are from tropical regions, um, mostly in the, in Southeast Asia. I do have one American species that I'm going to show off today. Um, okay. that's pretty, pretty cool. I can't wait to show you guys, but I think we would start I... with our herbivores. Yeah, so. one of the things I love about those guys is just how they wiggle in the wind, you know, like it looks like they like they simulate the leaf shaking in the wind, you know, so mm -hmm. you can see yeah, them kind they, of like, yeah. Lots of phasmids do that. Even the ones that um, look more like sticks, uh -huh. um, they will also do that where they kind of do that, yeah, that waving. That little wiggle wave. Where they yeah. are just kind of, kind of, yeah, trying to look like a leaf blown in the wind. Mm -hmm. There she goes. So yeah, these ladies are cool. Let me get out another leaf insect. So the ones that I've shown you so far are kind of small and dainty. Um, this next one might take me a second to get out. She is not so small and dainty and her legs can be a little scratchy. So give me one second here and I will get her out. She is really, really cool and very, very feisty. Get her out. 
Oh, I know. So upset. Well, actually, while I was trying to get her out, I managed to get her male counterpart out. <laughs> so this oh. is a Malaysian jungle myth. And they're going nuts right now. <laughs> and this is a male. Uh-huh. So you can see how look big the male antennas. is. Yeah. What's that? Oh, I said, look at his antenna. Oh, yeah. His, yeah. a lot of the male, um, a lot of the males of various insect species have much longer antenna than the females. Um, <laughs> he's really not happy about being picked up. Um, the females, I mean, their antennas are pretty long too. With the males though, I mean, their main, their main goal is to find a female and they need a long antenna to do that. Uh -huh. He's really <laughs> upset. If you notice when he's, uh, he's doing this thing where he's kind of doing handstands. Uh huh. I'm going to put him back because he's just okay. not happy. Is that him like rearing up and saying he's yeah, mad and exactly. angry? Exactly. So they'll kind of like do a handstand and rear their back legs up. Uh -huh. And if you, um, if, if you grab them the wrong way, they will just clamp you with those legs. And, uh -huh. you know, it's, they're pretty thorny and they're pretty big. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't break skin or anything, but they'll give you a good pinch. And that is one of their main defense mechanisms is for these guys, at least, because again, they're herbivores, they're non-venomous. Let's see. I think I've managed to get this female out. She just wants to stay on the leaf. <laughs> Can you see her? <laughs> oh yeah, she looks just like. And now the, the leaf. male's going up my arm. <laughs> that is the caveat of working with live animals, especially bugs. Is uh, they you can't they never really behave. Oh, I see him. Do there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily, with my job. I'm pretty used to bugs curling on me, <laughs> but here's the female. It's going up my earring. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's holding on. I hear, I see him. Uh, um, the female's so pretty. I know she. So they're this gorgeous green. And I can't tell—is the male that color too? No, he's kind of brownish. Sort of the opposite of birds, right? But yeah, get so the pretty colors and these two are a really great example of what's called sexual dimorphism. Uh -huh. And that basically, it essentially just means that the males and females look really, really different. Um, yeah. There's nothing, uh, nothing else that that really means. Um, and with yeah. stick insects, uh, it's usually the males are longer and skinnier. The females are large and wide and a little mean. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so this is a full grown female. And when she is carrying eggs, she will, um, she will be one of the heaviest insects on the planet. She'll weigh oh, wow. about as much as an apple when she Whoa. has eggs. So they are, they are big. So yeah. Uh -huh. All right. I'll let you go back to your lunch since you don't really <laughs> want to be hanging out with me anymore. So those are some examples of some of the herbivores that we have. Uh huh. But we also, as I'm sure you're all aware, have lots of predators. And so I have two predators with me today that I wanted to show you guys. And the first one I'm going to show you is an American species. So I'm going to flip the camera around here. There we go. So what I have in this container here is what's known as a giant vinegaroon. Oh, and she is down in her burrow. Let me see if I can coax her out. So these are non-venomous arachnids. So they are related to spiders. Come on, squirt. Jeez. Oh man. Nobody's happy with me today. There she is. 
It's kind of a dreary day out there. They kind of wanted to just yes, hang out. Yes, yes. Everybody's in a mood today. Yeah. So this is a giant vinegar rune. It is a species that is found in the American Southwest. Uh -huh. um, so she's maybe, I'd say, a teenaged vinegar rune. So she'll probably get at least twice this size. And the really cool thing about these guys is they're non-venomous but uh -huh. they will spray acetic acid from the base of their abdomen. And acetic acid is, of course, the main compound in vinegar, which is how they mm -hmm. get their name. Let me see if I can just, I'm gonna set this down and get a cricket and see if I can't coax her out with a little food. And so, is it the smell so, that keeps is it the smell that keeps other animals away or is it actually the, oh yeah well if you get it yeah. in your eyes it can be kind of irritating uh -huh. um, that's never happened to me but it definitely you can yeah you can smell that vinegar um and that's really it's pretty strong and like i said they're non-venomous so she can't actually physically bite you because she doesn't have fangs uh -huh. um, but they can um, give you a good pinch. Lots of pinching bugs. Where are you at, squirt? Come back out. Oh. Maybe we'll leave that cricket in there for now and see if she wants to come back out. Oh, there she is. She's pretty account? fun to watch hunt. She uh, she gets pretty animated. So I do have another predator that we can show off while we're waiting for squirt to come back. Mm -hmm. This is another tropical species. This is the Vietnamese centipede. Mm. And now, is so this, this is probably what? one of the most venomous animals that we have at the butterfly house and insectarium. They are pretty formidable predators. And where do these guys live? These guys live in Southeast Asia. There we go. So typically they I... like to burrow. I think she's a little upset that I took her hide away, but uh -huh. um, as with anyone, if we throw some food in there, I think she will be a little more content. Let me set this down again and get another cricket. And we'll see if she eats for us. All right. Here we go. Oh. Yeah, there she goes. Got her cricket. Now she's a content girl. So the cool thing about these uh, Vietnamese centipedes is um, they have these modified front legs. So obviously, you know, they have these lots and lots of legs, one leg per body segment. But the legs near their mouth are um, modified to inject venom into their prey. And if you get a good look at them, they kind of look like um, really buff forearms. <laughs> there she goes. The camera's inverted. I'm having trouble navigating. Putting it, yeah. I, I got a good look at her. Yeah. Yeah. And so, how often does she? Cool. How often does she eat? So all of our predators, or most of them, eat about once a week. Uh huh. Um, she's a little more of a voracious feeder, so occasionally we'll feed her more than that if we think she needs it. But yeah, for the most part, it's just once a week. Um, a lot of our predators have pretty slow metabolisms and they are known as um, sit and wait predators. So they kind of mm -hmm. just hang out in their burrows and wait for their prey to come to them or they'll come out at night and do some light scavenging around their burrows, but for the most part, they don't need to expend as much energy as we do during the day. They're just kind mm -hmm. of 
hanging out and waiting there for their food to come to them. There we go. There's a good and so how there. long do how long does uh, an insect like this live? So What's this is actually an arthropod. She is not uh -huh. an insect. Oh. So one of the big, um, so yeah, we, a more accurate name would probably be the arthropodarium, but that uh -huh. doesn't really roll off the tongue quite as well as insectarium does. Um, yeah. So insects have six legs and three body segments. She has a lot more. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, so she, but she does have an exoskeleton, which is what you need to be an arthropod. Um, so she would live, I want to say five years or so. It's kind of difficult okay. because the lifespan of these animals in captivity can vary from their natural lifespan. Um, and so it's kind of difficult to say for some of them, you know, a lot of our tarantulas will live for 20 years, like a, like, of course, the famous Polly. The Polly, well, we also have a Polly. Do you know about Polly the pollinator? <laughs> oh, yes, is that the name of the bee? Yes, uh-huh, she pollinates philanthropy. Oh, yes, that's yep. excellent, what a but good job. Your, your Polly is pretty cool too, though. She's I think, uh, well, she's in her burrow right now, but I could try to get a good look at Polly if you guys wanted to see her. I, I love Polly. All right, let's see if we can yeah. get a good look at her. So Polly is a bird eating tarantula. Polly likes to spend most of her time in her burrow. It's kind of hard to see, but you can, uh, you can kind of see her butt there. Yeah, I can see her butt and two of her legs. <laughs> and so is it true that they really eat birds? I mean, I know the answer, but I'm asking for the general public. Oh, uh, yeah. So yes, the um, the first, basically, the, the reason that they got that name was because one of the first um, recorded um, sightings of the Goliath bird eating tarantula was mm -hmm. it feeding on a hummingbird. And um, thinking like thinking about it, I kind of assumed that that hummingbird was probably sick or injured because um, these spiders like to hang out on the ground. They don't typically mm -hmm. go up into trees to hunt for birds. Um, mm -hmm. So most of the time they're just eating smaller insects or other spiders. Um, sometimes they will hunt for um, small mammals, but yeah, they like rodents birds and... are not typically on the menu, despite the name Goliath bird eating mm -hmm. tarantula. So yeah. And it looks like I managed to get squirt out of her burrow. I don't think she's very happy with me, but she's she's here. There she is. The camera keeps flipping. Oh. There she is. Oh, you gotta go up a little bit. Oh, yeah, there you are. So yes, let's see if I can get this to. All right, there we go. It's like trying to do your ponytail or braid in the mirror, right? <laughs> there. So she's kind of got her abdomen up in the air. You can see uh -huh. my camera's not really focusing on it, but you can kind of uh -huh. see the whip um, coming off the end of her body. That's this yep. thing right here. Uh -huh. I touched it and she was not happy with that. But um, so one of the other names of this type of arachnid is a, is a whip scorpion. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see why that is with the not only the whip on her abdomen, but she's got these long whips that are actually modified legs. And ah, of course, yeah. her Chalicera, those big claws on the front are not legs. Those are part of her mouth. She is in a position that is saying, please stop bothering me. <laughs> I don't Leave want to alone. be on your show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing doesn't no, get a choice. Smart. 
funny, funny and thing. And I can see the active centipede over there. <laughs> What's that? I can see the centipede. Oh yeah, she's running around. Yeah, she has already finished her food. She's she, so with um, spiders, mm -hmm. they have to inject venom into their prey and then kind of digest it on the outside of their body because their um, mouths are too small. Oh, she's ah. going back underground. Um, so when they're digesting their food, they'll just kind of hang, they'll just hang on to it. They'll keep their food in their fangs. They'll bathe it in their digestive juices. Um, to kind of liquefy it, um, and then they will sort of suck up that liquefied prey item through their mouth, kind of like a milkshake. We call them mm. cricket milkshakes around here. Yep. Um, but with predators like the centipede, they're actively chewing, and so the process is much faster. And so, yeah, she's already done with her cricket dinner. She says, see you later. I'm out. <laughs> and does she eat the whole thing or just the the insides oh yeah she i i do not see any cricket parts yeah. left occasionally if we give her something bigger or something with a tougher exoskeleton um you will find parts of them but yeah for the most part the whole thing gets eaten uh, so cool she's a really pretty i like her little tipped red Oh yeah, she, she's got some fun colors, definitely colors that say, I am venomous, leave me yep. alone. So is there like, I don't know if I've ever asked this question, but is there, it seems to me like there's more venomous creature, insects or anthropods in tropical places than in other places. Is this true? And if so, why? Um, I would say that's, probably true. I can't say that definitively off the top of yeah. my head. Um, I, I'd say part of that probably has to do with just the biodiversity in trop tropical regions. Mm -hmm. There are significantly more species of animals um, kind of located in those regions than there are here. And so, um, you know, if there's more things around to eat, then they're, they're, developing these new ways to defend themselves against the the predators that are coming mm -hmm. after them at least that would be my hypothesis as to why that is yeah. but yeah lots lots of venomous and poisonous things located kind of more around the equator than there are here yeah um, but we do have some poisonous do we have poisonous insects here we do. So we have, so um, monarch butterflies are actually poisonous. Um, so there's a pretty important distinction between uh, poison and venom. So mm -hmm. venomous animals like this centipede and then um, all spiders. Mm -hmm. So venomous animals are the ones that if they bite you, then they can make you sick. Um, mm -hmm. So if you think of like V, venom, fangs, that's a good, easy mm -hmm. way to remember that. And then poisonous animals are animals that won't harm you unless you ingest them. Mm -hmm. um, so if you think like monarch butterflies, those are poisonous animals, but obviously you can hold a monarch butterfly and it's not gonna hurt you. Um, mm -hmm. Or millipedes, lots of millipedes are poisonous. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you think of Snow White and the poison apple, um, it wasn't a venomous apple. It wasn't going to bite her, but once she ate it, it right. caused her to get ill. So that's a good that's a great, way to remember. Great those analogy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I got to witness something really cool in Costa Rica last year where we had these murder, I think they're called murder ants, but they, murder ants. Took on, I think they took on like a little baby scorpion and they oh. killed the scorpion and then carried it off. Yeah. It there, was crazy. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of cool things happening in the natural world. And there are, you know, various animals that have developed defenses against some of these um, venoms and poisons that animals produce. I think there's like a shrew in the desert that is impervious to scorpion venom. And so it preys on scorpions pretty almost exclusively. 
Um, Interesting. It's cool. It's a constant yep. arms race in the natural world. Yeah. It's very, yeah. very yes. interesting to watch. So, yeah. Um, do you have anything else for us? I don't think so. I, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me on. And thank you guys for participating in Missoula Gives and congratulations on, congratulations on meeting your match. That's really exciting. Thank um, you. And I can't wait for the groundbreaking next week. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be so fun. I can't believe it's here already. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, um, we will see you later. And um, what if somebody wants to do, like, I know you're doing some in-school stuff. Is there things, ways that people can interact with the animals now that we don't, there's not really a space? Yeah, yeah. so we are offering custom online bug encounters. So if you follow uh -huh. us on Facebook, we do online bug encounters every week. Um, yep. So you can do a custom online bug encounter um, or we do have some programs coming up um, that will involve the, the community, like community science programs. Uh -huh. um, those haven't really been announced yet, but uh, they are still kind of in development. But I think the best way to stay on top of that, to find out when those programs are going to be offered, is to sign up for our newsletter, which you can do through our website. And Great. that will keep you up to date on everything that's going on and where and when you can see the animals. Great. Well, thanks, Brenna. I always look forward to your bug encounters. Thanks for being such a great wrangler. <laughs> thanks so much. Yeah. We'll talk to you later. All right.